Hi, I'm here with what is hopefully a fresh can of Prospect from Foley Brothers that I purchased in Vermont where the cans I think are only available. I've had this beer before, I think I, I did a video review, but that was a, of a bottled version and the bottled versions by the time they get to Boston always tend to be not fresh at all. Uh, the guy at the shop I bought this from said it just came in. There wasn't, there's no like markings for date or anything on it, but I feel like these cans probably sell out so quickly um, in Vermont that it's gonna be fresh no matter where you get it. And I also found, finally, a short description of this beer. Um, they don't, Foley Brothers doesn't have a website. They use mainly their Facebook page to post about updates and things. Um, but on Rate Beer, the website, they said that this was hopped with six pounds per barrel of Galaxy and Citra, which I didn't know, I could have maybe guessed, and Vermont grain. Um, it is 9% alcohol, which is a little strong for the Vermont IPAs. Um, yeah, and it says it uh, uses locally grown grains malted at Peterson Quality Malt in Moncton, Vermont. Let's hop into it. Don't know, yeah, exactly how fresh this is. Hopefully it's quite fresh. A lot of my friends really like this beer. I feel like I'm just uh, too much of a snob about freshness and I just don't enjoy old oxidized hop character. Um, and this looks really nice. Very, very pale. A little bit hazier than the bottled versions I've had because in the bottles, a little sedimented form formed. Ah, oh, that smells very good. Mm-hmm. No old hop character in there. It's a nice bread crust going on. The galaxy isn't too green and eucalyptus. There's a little bit of a uh, Smarties, candy-ish, uh, sweet hops and malts combined in the magical way that beers like this can do it. Maybe some guava. And like pineapple marinated with the eucalyptus or something like that. On the edge of menthol-y greenness. But not quite oniony. Yep, that smells very nice. Mm, got some body to it. And there's just a little bit of a bite. But it continues with that tropical candy flavor in the finish. And oh yeah. This is really good. I'm very glad that I got to have this really fresh. Mm. Extremely palatable at 9%. No booze burn. Not uh, really, really bitter and or chalky. There might eventually be a little bit of a burn in the back of the throat. Um, I'm noticing a teeny bit of heat now. But that's really nice. It's not <clears throat> one of your really, really crazy, murky, unfiltered IPAs. It has like a huge amount of body and chalky texture. But as has, has definitely some some almost full body to it. It's a different sort of thing though. And it's just a perfect combination of greenness and just barely ripe tropical fruits. Definitely pineapple and peach. Yeah, this is this is a nice beer. I'm finally understanding why people like it so much. And there's just no flaws. It's so clean. It's not doesn't have a bunch of weird gypsumy pill flavors going on in the finish. It's not too sweet. It's not so dry hopped that it 
rakes your whole, your tongue and your palate and, and, and everything, your mouth with dryness and texture. And it's, yeah, it's clean. I feel like they, they use a yeast that's not as, you know, to the, to the, to the front of the, the, the palate. <clears throat> as a lot of New England IPAs, it's not a, I'm not noticing a whole bunch of stone fruit, almost buttery sort of flavors um, from some brewery that's using, you know, uh, overwhelming Conan yeast. The aroma is not gigantic, but it's definitely there that you can definitely pick up all the little bits of the hops in, in, in the aroma. Very pleasant beer. It's just perfectly executed. There, I, I, there's nothing. There, there are no flaws in this one in this beer. I've had it a couple times before, and it was always just like, oh, there's some piney old hop, wet earth character going on. Um, from the, the oxidizing hops that made it just taste, remind me of like old fashioned West Coast double IPAs that I was drinking never fresh. Um, and it just reminded me of that, even though this is not nearly as, as dark as a West Coast IPA would be, it is pretty much, yeah, this has to be only pale malt in here. Let's see, it's super pale, especially for like a 9% alcohol beer it's, and a hazy beer. It's pretty amazing that they keep it. So it's like not even golden. It's paler than that. Just it's just straight pale yellow. Mm. Yeah, this is one you can you can savor too. I, and I don't I don't know if it'll be difficult for me to finish the whole can myself though. I usually don't I don't like big strong double IPAs because they're just too much of something. But this gives you a nice pop. Of hops and bitterness and I've got some texture on my tongue but it's it's not taxing on the palate too much and but it's they're doing that without making it extra sweet um, so yeah this is this is a fantastic beer if you see cans of this snatch them up uh, I would trade for the cans of this as long as you can make sure they're fresh um, yeah this this is definitely up there. It's and it's its own style too. It's uh, it doesn't have the crazy haziness that some frost beers do and, and Hill Farmstead beers. It doesn't have the kind of honey nut Cheerios toastiness that Alchemist does. This is kind of somewhere in between those in a way. It's yeah. It's they're not just a copying some other recipe or, or style of IPA to the T. They're, they got something a little bit different going on and they're executing it like just perfectly. Yeah, I would give this 425 at least easy. And the, the bready malt character too, that's what, what one of my friends really loves about it. And yeah, it's got that clean, crusty white bread thing going on all throughout it. It's not exactly barley though. I'm not getting like, I'm not smelling specifically barley, like mashing barley or anything like that, but it just ends up with something pretty amazing. So seek this one out, I guess. Bye-bye.